Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, if you're preparing for the AZ900, which is the Microsoft Azure Fundamental Exam, this lab would be helpful to you. Uh, I have previously completed the lab probably six or seven months back. I'm redoing this using a Mac laptop this time. Uh, and this is a newer version, so if you're preparing, you might want to consider looking at this series. In this particular lab, we are going to look at how to create a web application and we are following all of the github labs uh, that are designed designed for you to be able to succeed in az 900 exam from microsoft learning and i'm going to give you this link uh, in my video again microsoft learning they publishes all kinds of labs and they're all available on youtube and uh, we have just completed the first one again using Mac creating a virtual machine and in this lab We are working on lab 2 which is create a web app. So in this one We are going to create a web application that runs a docker container Now uh, if you do not know what a docker is, it's a it's an isolated environment uh, uh, That you can run it's uh, repeatable it's very lightweight uh, lighter than the virtual machine and where it shares the kernel of your operating system uh, but uh, it shares the hardware okay and and i'm currently preparing a dedicated video for 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 docker containers and how you use it how to run it and uh, should be available in in a couple days from now if you're interested now for in this one <coughs> in this particular lab we're going to create a web application and uh, if you read this note right here Azure web application is really uh, there are four different kind of services they're kind of lumped together and called as Azure app services uh, and in this one these together they help uh, help you to run and host web applications and the four type of services that are commonly grouped together as a web application are the web apps, mobile apps, API apps, and the logic apps, okay? Uh, they, they may look different, but at the end, internally, they all operate in a very, very similar way. And web applications, they're, they're very common. You know, a lot of people, they're using the web, web applications very easy to deploy and uh, and that's what we're going to do in this lab it's going to be a fairly short lab uh, to do this lab you want to have a azure account subscription with you if you do not have one just go ahead and register for a free account and uh, you should be good so again what we'll do we'll really go and search for this particular service in our, in our azure portal and then we're going to create a new instance of that service okay we're going to choose our subscription we're going to create a new resource group and we are going to name that application as my docker web app and then a unique number that name has to be unique within azure we're going to publish as a docker container and we're going to choose a linux operating system uh, uh, to host my application and we're going to use the east us okay and uh, in the region so let's just get started uh, so here is my Azure account. I'm already logged in, so I'm just over here in the search bar. That's what I do for any service. I'm just going to search for that particular service, app service. You can type it in, and this is the app service that showed up. I'm just going to click on it. It should bring up the app service for me. Uh, once this is available, I'm going to click on the add button right here. So once I click on the add button, it should give me some options to configure my web application and that experience should be very familiar to you by this time uh, for any resource if you want to deploy you gotta have a resource group okay so I'm gonna hit on the create new and I'm gonna configure it the way the lab wants you to configure so I'm gonna copy my RG web app one and we're gonna come back over here we're gonna paste that and hit OK. So this is a new resource group that is going to be created. That means this resource group is not available within my Azure environment at the moment. You need a, a 
Azure web app name and here is the name of the web app and again it has to be unique so let's just copy this one first come back over here paste it and then change that x x x to maybe three six seven eight yeah that name is available and you see that green tick mark that's telling me that name is available to me and I can use that name now here it's asking do you know publish this as a code do you already have the code or do you know publish as a docker container so we uh, for this particular lab we are going to publish that as a docker container and we are going to use Linux operating system uh, for my web apps okay and region here we're going to use the east us so you can also type east over here and uh, east us is the region and uh, here the la the last thing is the app service plan okay this is really something you should spend some time okay and you can uh, let's just go back to the lab first and see what they're recommending before i uh, tell you a little bit more about that uh, app service plans okay so over here we are done up to this point on the docker uh, configure the container information let me see here uh, here is the docker where you can configure so so they're not talking anything about over here they're just going with the default so this is an important uh, consideration an important decision that you need to make okay so by default is choosing your premium v2 p1 v2 is going to give you 210 total ACUs, 3.5 gigs of memory okay so but if you see there is a, a, a clickable link for chain size if you click on that one that is really giving you something called a spec a spec picker okay and if you look at it there are at the very top there are three different groupings of the app service plan so first if you are developing something in your environment you do not really need a production environment you shouldn't be even in this in this tab you should be in the dev test okay and if you look at it recommended pricing f1 one gigs memory 60 minutes a day compute is completely free so if you really just want to test something you can just go with that free version of it if you need a little bit more just go with 100 tool issue 1.7 gigs of memory a series compute equivalent uh, so it another thing to notice with the app service plans memory and the storage is usually included so you do not have to create your storage account separately okay so that's a good thing so production we had this p1 v2 automatically selected for us so for this deployment we can select it the thing that you would notice once you come to the production okay for the for the deep test you see there are not too many features here there is nothing in this big white area you have nothing that you see okay but if you come down to production now see over here included features you have so many of them because it's a production environment you're paying a lot more you can custom your domains you can use SSL okay you can have IP SSL binding you can auto scale up to 20 instances with this particular plan okay uh, so and the staging slots up to you can have to have up to 20 staging slot and this is something when you start deploying you have a ci cd integration those things will become very important for you and this particular uh, 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 tier it also supports daily backup up to 50 times and you can also use traffic manager to improve your performance and availability so high availability is built in right uh, here it's also giving you included hardware as your compute units is is on top of your memory and the storage so I would what I would recommend for you uh, isolated is the most expensive ones if you go to that one uh, you see there is some 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 additional features that are now available to you single tenant system take more control over the resources being used by your app so this is coming from a shared environment to your own on-prem type environment so you'll be paying more but you will have more resources available to you so this one if you see is scale even more so the previous plan we looked at you could only scale up to 20 instances in this one you can scale up to 100 instances and more allowed upon request look at that so if you have really an enterprise solution that really 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 busy you can go for that one here you can even have private app access which was not available isolated network that was not available even on a production 
uh, tier okay again the traffic manager is still available to you so what I'll do I'll go back to production and select that one by default that was uh, by default that was came up premium v2 uh, v2 p1 v2 uh, p1 v2 so I'm just gonna stick to that one and hit apply so I'm really not making any changes so for the exam what I would suggest uh, go through it specially pay attention to what you can do with the free account what you can do with the premium account and what you can do with the isolated environment type account okay so now next go to the docker configuration and here you have single container uh, quick start and what it can if you want to uh, sample container so let's look at the lab and see what they're saying they're saying go with a single container uh, use the docker hub as the image source and access type is public so go back so uh, here we want to use the docker hub so that's your registry so if you have any experience with with docker docker hub is probably the most uh, uh, highly used the docker registry out there i have my own account you probably do have your own docker account as well here uh, uh, access type is public now we need the image tag and the startup command so let's see what image type that we need so image is the Microsoft ACI hello world is what we need so let's come back over here and put it there and here uh, the startup command it's an optional uh, feature uh, what we will do when you run the command uh, as the part of the application startup once the container is running it will run a particular command for you it's not required at this moment so we're gonna leave that one but everything else we have configured the way the lab is asking us to do so come back over here and that's all that we need to create our first web application so let's come over here uh, monitoring is something they have not talked in the lab but I would always recommend that uh, enable application insights absolutely okay uh, but in this one the application insight is not supported in your current selection of subscription runtime stack operating system okay I'm using a free version of my subscription so this is not supported at the moment but it's supported by default so I'm not gonna worry about it I'm just gonna go to the tags and again tags is something uh, it's not required but I always recommend that you use tags for best practices okay for this one I can say like AZ 900 and my tag is like lab 2 maybe okay and that's about it now I can hit review and create and again it's gonna go through some validation and if the validation and everything looks good I will be able to deploy again just like the virtual machine or any other resources you have a little bit of description a summary of what you have configured so far your subscription name resource group name of your web application you're publishing as a docker container you're going to get the Microsoft EC hello world docker image from your docker hub and this is the URL of your docker hub you have a tag that is that we have assigned it is going to use the Linux as the host machine. Uh, it will be deployed in the East US. It's going to use the premium V2 SKU. Uh, it's a size small and uh, ACU 210 total issue and it's a 3.5 gigs of memory. And the monitoring, uh, since my subscription doesn't support, is not allowed or not enabled, your subscription might have this enabled. Okay. But that's all I have and validation is successful so I can now hit the create button and it should start the deployment if you see over here um, at this corner this is my notification bar and it is saying that initial initializing template deployment to resource group my RG web app one and once that started you see this page has changed and we have a big larger window where we can Kind of see what is going on and again um, anytime if you like you can go to the resource group itself and the resource group this is the resource group this is the resource group that just got created and they have a deployment option over here like a deployment uh, uh, area and here uh, it usually tells you what is going on within this resource group so I can always come back and click on the this link which says one deploying and this will take you to this link 
and look at that this deployment is just done and in from my notification it also shared that right and you can click on this blue nice blue button to go to your resource at this time so let's just click on that one so now uh, this should bring up my app service my docker web app 3678 okay so how do you know it's an app service first of all there is the icon that's one way to identify what kind of service it is and another thing is the app service it says right there that it's a type of app service okay let's just look at real quick uh, here there is some warning docker hub is changing its quotas for public containers on November 1st which will affect your app performance click here to learn more we don't need to worry about this one at the moment resource group is this it's running it's deployed in the east us uh, here is my tag uh, here is the url okay so if you click on that url it better brings up the lab so i'm just going to click on that one and there we go it says welcome to azure container instances so i know my app is running in that particular url Let's go back over here. Uh, we have FTP deployment username. We haven't set any. Here is the FTP host name, FTP host name. Uh, here, app service usually comes with lots of uh, graphs and charts because your web application, you want to track so many different things. Do you have an HTTP server error? What's the data uh, in, data out? Okay. And then how many requests you're getting? Are people going to your websites a lot? Are you getting thousands and thousands of requests every minute? Is your web service responding very well? What is the response time? So a lot of uh, graphical view is available to you immediately so you can start tracking and understand how your web app is performing. That's a great feature of cloud. So I, I have not, I don't need to, you know, configure anything. It's just out there. It's just there for me and I can track and I can react and uh, and think how the web service should be configured and the web app, web app if i if I'm happy with it or not if you want to stop the web app you can just click on over here if you want to delete it again delete button is available over here uh, you have again a lot more other features and we will look at those uh, at a later video but for the 900 exam this is probably all you need to do so just uh, spend some time going through the different tiers of web apps how you deploy it if you use docker how you do that and especially look at the differences between those different tiers and what you can do like which tier would support auto scaling which tier you would have to use uh, ssl encryption okay type of things like that so pay attention to that and you should be fine so let's just go back to the lab one more time so taste the web app. Uh, we have done that already. We have went to the URL and uh, we made sure that this page is available to us, which is this page right here. So this is the end of this lab. Now for this lab, since we have deployed a very, very expensive web application, I would highly recommend that you delete the resources once you are done. To do that, I'll show you how I do it. I just go back to my resource group and your resource group is right here and since I do not want to delete all the resources deployed in the resource group individually I'm just gonna copy this resource group name and then I'm gonna click on this button right here delete resource group and here it's gonna ask you type the resource group name just for verification here is the warning and everything so I'm gonna paste that one so once I paste and it matches my resource group name right here it gives me the delete button right here and I'm going to click on it and it should delete the resource group and that way I avoid paying any money for this particular service that I will not be using other than this lab. All right, if you like this video, please give me a like, a thumbs up and then uh, please subscribe if you if you like to see more videos like this. If you have any comments, please leave it. If you have if you want to learn about any components of Azure uh, also, please feel free to leave a comment. I do lots of different videos time to time and I would love to help you out. And again, if you're studying for the AZ 900, it's an entry-level exam. Shouldn't be too difficult. Study well, do your labs, and good luck. Thank you.